additional 150 pounds is absorbing that. Except for one local area. How'd it feel? <laughs> Wasn't that bad, right? You want some more? You want five more? Okay. Are we scared? Okay. Well, the result of letting my son drive my car. He had just learned how to drive stick. He needed it because his car was coming down for rear main seal. So the plan was to let him drive it a few days. On the day his car got ready, after promising me he wasn't going to get on it, well, he got on it. And uh, if you've seen in the videos when I've gotten on it, uh, the wheel, when it hits boost and boost kicks in, the wheels, you know, is torque steering left and right. The part of it is the power, not the power. I mean, it's not like it's some egregious amount of power. But it's the, the, the torquing back and forth of the, just the way the differential is. But it also has the phantom grip in there. And I think that adds to it. Because it, it didn't used to do this before when I ran nitrous and stuff like that. So, yeah, he gets next to a Cadillac right as it kicks in. Of course, he's left, right, left, right, and he decides to hit the curb rather than the car, which that was smart. And so as a result, he creamed the wheel, blew the tire. The back tire has a little curb rash on it. The back wheel, I should say. So with great power comes great responsibility. So he's going to buy me two new tires. I mean, sorry, two new wheels, a new tire, I'm going to check it for wheel, for wheel bearing issues, control arm issues. Of course, it's going to be in alignment afterwards. He's doing all the work. So, yeah. Glad he was okay. But in the end, yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. Alright guys, hello. <laughs> Alright, so uh, just an update here real quick. Uh, got the new some tires. I say tires, we replaced the one. Got the, got the two wheels. Got two because the one was utterly destroyed. You saw in the video. This other one here, it's got 
quite a bit of curb rash on it and stuff like that. This one can probably be refinished and repaired. And I went ahead and had uh, my son, who paid for all this because of his mistake, uh, buy me another wheel because in the event these goes discontinued, I'll have an extra in case anything ever does happen. So then I can get it refurbished and stuff. The goal here, like I've said in the past, is to get these done in bronze. And the color of the car, I've decided on the color and what it's going to be. And that's important because I'm about to explain why that's important is uh it's going to be that nissan kind of the, the current model that's out right now uh 2022 2021 it's that orangish look that kind of a, a metal flake kind of look and the sun as sun hits it just right and the cloudy day it's more subdued i went between red i went uh like mazda miata red back in the 95s period 2000 somewhere in there uh, I've had red before I thought about white but it's gonna be a complete color change uh, so I just settled with that I was thinking about there was like a orange that you have for Dodge vehicles it's a Dodge Nitro uh, I've seen them on those before uh, but I, I, I prefer the orange that the Nissan has whatever the color that is and I don't know what it is but I'll get the paint code and we'll know of course I was debating whether to leave these like just primered black or whatever they're gonna be the same body color It'll have this black here to offset, and then the, the lug nuts are going to be an orangish type color as well. So the theme would be uh, that orange color, a chocolate looking bronzy looking wheel uh, with the orange lugs, the body kit painted the same look. The hood I'm going to go ahead and get refinished uh, and have it re-clear coated. The top is going to be black, like the old uh, limited edition ones. I think it only came in yellow, red, and white, maybe. So that's going to be black. Uh, I, I debated doing like a wrap, kind of a mural, take a lot of the old Saturn pictures that I have from performance and, and people's cars and stuff in the past, just things that I really thought were really good examples of Saturn uh, performance and modifications. But I'm going to keep this carbon fiber. What I thought I would do with that then was maybe this section here, get a wrap on this or something that, or like a, like a decal with, with like a collage of those Saturns uh, on there. Something, something different. Of course, I'll go over here real quick. My board here, I've got it set up in, you know, number one, two, and three. So one is mechanical, two is the interior, and of course three is the final where you're going to do your paint and any kind of things like that. So right now, uh, what I did was the mechanical is I've already done the header wrap. And I know I said I was going to do the unit chip, and there it is. I've already done the larger intercooler, the engine oil cooler upgrade, so all three of those are done. And I'm just going to work one by one, but... I'm going to take, I'm going to do one, two, and three. And of course, three is going to be, this is a mechanical deal here. It has to do with brakes. I'm probably going to convert the rears to disc. I'm thinking about it anyway. Different stuff like that. But this right here, as I said, was a holdup in not taking it to the next step with power. Because I need bigger injectors and I need to put the unit chip in to tune for fuel and timing and all that good stuff. But when I went to the track, I was really disappointed in, in, in the way that I could not raise the rev limit on it to a set. Now, I could have, threw, I could have thrown a auto PCM in there, which would take away the rev limits and the speed limits. But it wouldn't allow me to floor it with the clutch in and have it settle at, say, five grand and build boost at the same time. I'd be able to rev it to wherever I wanted and launched where wherever I wanted, but I wouldn't be in boost like a like a two-step would allow. And of course the unit chip can do that. So I backed off of that because I said, you know what, it's the summer months. I'm gonna bring it down. I've had all these things. This is what I'm doing right now. That that was the beta version. I had to make sure the rear mount would work. I, I, you knew if you've been following this little bitty pathetic channel, I had to find a turbo that would spool up the way I wanted. So I tried the one, it didn't work. I tried the other one, I'm happy with it. 
And so those things, routing the piping underneath there, kind of kind of getting a feel, see if it would work out or not. Was it too, was it going to be really boost lagging no matter what? So all that's fine. So, but that was all pieced together in a way that there was going to be a, 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 a round two. This is the round two. But for whatever reason, I guess I was trying to beat this guy at the track. And I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down for the unit chip. And then I'll go out there. But I'm just going to do all this stuff now. It's August right now. So I would think by spring I should be done and ready for paint. I'm going to sand it all myself. I'm going to do all that stuff. And uh, so that was this is beta version. Now we're going to take the steps to do it when you do. The engine's coming down and out. I'm going to treat the engine bay. It's not a show car but it's going to look nice uh, when I pop the hood to show folks at the track. So I've got a lot of stuff to do, and so that's what all this stuff here is. And uh, so just step by step in it to get to the point where I'm happy with what I have, and then I can keep out from underneath the hood for a while and just enjoy it. Now, through no fault of my son, yes, he did have the accident, and I still, he knows that although you see the damage for what it was, and he's, he's taking care of that. He's going to stand up and, and take ownership of it. This thing, uh, I lost my lug key. I do, not, that, is, that is not like me to lose something like that. And I don't know what brand this is, what lug nut. I got these back probably in 97, 2000 something. But these are a eight spline uh four or five six, yeah eight spline but they're not gorilla they're not mcgard i tried every eight spline tool they had tried reaching out to them trying to get some help and they said you know we never made an eight spline in that configuration so i don't know what the issue is here but here's why this sucks these eight spline are unlike any eight spline out there you can't take an eight spline key and make this work uh, to take these off and they look like the regular types, but it's the spacing in between here that made the difference. And the thing was, I had one on every lug. So this came, I bought it as a set. It ain't like I had three of one and then this was my locking one. You know, a regular eight spline on the other three and then this was my locking one. I had them all on here. So when I lost it, which I used to keep it in the trunk, there's a cavity back there and I had a nice little pouch that I kept it in and I shoved it inside there to keep it kind of stationary and stuff and I do not know for the life of me where that dang thing is at. I don't know, I searched high and low and I knew as soon as I broke these off, I'd probably find it because that's, that's what happens to me. But uh, couldn't find it. So I caught hell getting these off. I ended up having to uh, use heat and I went through not one but two uh, lug nut you know breakers and then the final one I used I had only five left to get off four on that side and one in the front on the other side I had these off first and uh, man you talk about difficult but so that's another reason it pissed me off so but that's where I'm going to get the new lug nuts. And like I said, I'll be able to... I was actually going to uh, uh, powder coat these the orange color, you know. But, oh well, it is what it is. I, I guess the only saving grace is I haven't found the key yet. So I can't be too pissed. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start getting these new coilovers put on. If you followed the the crap from the the progress coilovers that I had I had a set on the 95 that I just got out of here and they had been on there forever rarely used and the rears were valve for drag racing so that the back wouldn't squat so much well on this one because these fender flares are here I had to make sure especially in the back now that I've added the turbo weight back there I had to make sure that when I hit bumps while I'm driving on the freeway, it didn't come down and, you know, being that the tire is going to be riding, the edge of the tire rides about right here. Well, it wouldn't take not much contact at all, the friction for heat to burn a hole right through this right here. So, and it was, I was bottoming out. And so I contacted a spring company, told them what I had. I actually called Progress Group 
And man, they don't even, they looked up the rates for the Saturn offering that they had back then. They made a set for it. And she finally found the, the, the literature on it, what it was and all that stuff. And then we talked a little bit and she ended up giving me another, I say giving me, I bought them, but a different spring rate for the back so I could have a little bit of better weight handling because you hit a bump and it would just, you know, it was before I had these fender flares on here, it would just burn into the fender there when I had those other 17 inch tires on here. And uh, so knowing that that would be an issue, I went ahead and um, opted to get the, you know, the, the, the stiffer springs in the back. Still rocking the regular spring rates up front. Those should be fine. So by buying these, I've got to make sure what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to probably end up just swapping all the progress group springs over to these and keeping these springs as backups, I guess. And obviously using the springs that I have on here now combined with these to keep me from bottoming out again. So these have two adjustments on them. One is um, there's a there's a if you can see right here, there's a setting here and then there's a setting here. So this one here apparently sets the spring rate. So these will be say, I don't know, I'll make up a number 300 pound springs. But apparently you can tighten these down. And of course, as the wounds get closer, they get stiffer to some degree, right? So they don't travel as, travel as easy as you're hit, when you're hitting bumps. So it kind of increases the spring rate. And then this one actually handles the ride height on it. So which adjusts this part right here. And that's, you know, although this is not the same strut, uh, it, it's, it's what it does apparently. Now I've watched some guys on YouTube on how to take, now these, the struts I have are for the Subaru WRX and uh, they fit the knuckle portion and you can look on the YouTube, you can see that they'll fit the knuckle. So in other words, the ears here are the same width, but you have to edit the hole on the, on the, the coilover itself because this hole does not line up. This one, once you put it in there, and I guess you could do either or, I don't know but this one doesn't line up i'm sorry this one so they they cut the hole bigger on the strut assembly itself the other thing they'll do is because some of them will come with and you can buy them without but i went ahead and got ones with you can buy the actually the ones i have don't have it and i'll show you why i went that way but oh well, they may have i don't know i haven't opened that box in a minute but uh so long story short when you drop this strut out you actually have to end up cutting a big recess right here so that you can get the top hat in here so that you can have the adjustment for camber back and forth. And so some people were saying it weakens the strut tire by doing that. I don't know. They said, oh, we'll put a strut brace on it. Well, maybe. I don't know. Strut braces are generally used for bump steer. Like you hit a bump, it, it, it helps limit the steer in that direction when you hit a bump. Uh, I'm not I don't suspect it would hurt the structural integrity of this that much I'm not sure but anyway I don't have to do that because I found these online I was shocked that they had them out there because usually for something like this there'd be one for a Daewoo a Suzuki you know cars that aren't made anymore either but for the Saturn I don't know I guess the old mindset that nobody's modifying Saturn out there and if you get online, look at YouTube for videos of modded Saturns, yeah, that's going to be pretty much the case. But they have these. These are uh, made specifically for our car. And so you won't have to cut anything. You're just going to put these in here like that. And now you'll have the adjustment here that you want for camber and such on it. So pretty cool. And it's already been cut to clear inside here. And uh, so they should fit really well. And then you'll have your adjustment for camber that you might want. I would suspect, you know, that bearing right there, it's going to facilitate turning. Or this ball, the pillow ball here. You might have some noise. I don't know if there's a way you can inject some grease in there or not. I don't know. I guess you just have to install them first and see how they sound or what or whatnot. But yeah, this is the fix for that. So you don't have to do that whole cutting prospect. So I like those. 
So this is our set. It's from Raceland. Um, I didn't try to color match anything uh, because for the most part you can't see this stuff once it's up in there anyhow. But these are some extra cam camber bolts that I have that I'm going to put on these things. But the cool thing I like about this is now I'm just going to tell you straight up. I don't have high hopes that these things are going to do what they say they're going to do, but it says you have adjustable dampening on it. And my son bought a set for his uh, Altima, and he says he adjusts them. He says he thinks he can feel them, you know, that they're adjusted, you know, the way he wants them firm or soft. But I, I think in the back particularly for my setup, because I'm using those much stiffer springs that I got, I'm pretty sure they're, they're going to be ineffective for me uh, in the back. In the front, maybe not. But the cool thing I like is, uh, you know, we have the package tray back here. You can see the package tray. And so any adjustability that you might have, if you're going to keep the package tray back there, that cover, to adjust it, you know, you'd have to, you know, pull the back seat back forward, take the push pins out, pull that carpeting up and reach in there and adjust it and stuff. Kind of a hassle. So what they do is they offer these, uh, these little adjusters that are like an extension, like for a socket. And so what happens is you, you put this on the little adjuster on the, on the, uh, the strut itself. And then it's got little set screws that you tighten down on that knob. And then what you can do is cut a slit or a, an X in your carpeting in the back package tray and just put this down through there or put it up through it. Now you have these things sticking up and, and you can actually now reach back there and just turn and adjust things as you need to. Cause you can see, you see how I'm turning that. So that's pretty neat. And it tells you right there, which is, you know, as far as harder or softer H or S, I think that's pretty cool. And, and for, for, for our needs, you know, it, you know, for us, and there's two in here. So I guess it's meant specifically for those that might just have them in the back issues with them in the back, which most would. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So I like that portion of it. I just noticed this, this was sandwiched in here. That's cool. A little, uh, keychain, little shock keychain. That is pretty cool. And you can sit there and articulate it. That is awesome. But junk, right? Because they don't have the... I can't adjust the spring, the uh, uh, compression rate with softer or harder. Bunch of junk. Nah, I'm joking. Uh, I've got a little nitrous bottle on a turbo one. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. And that brings me to the cost. Uh, these were about 300 bucks. I'm not complaining, simply for the reason that coilovers, I think the BC coilovers might be $1,100, $1,200. Uh, there might be some other ones, very few though, that would be for a Saturn. So even if you go with the BC coilovers, you still got to get them for a Subaru Impreza WRX. I think it was 2002 to 2007, something like that. I'll make sure and list it in the description of what they, what year they actually cover. But if you just do a search, there's a lot of guys that have already done this. And that's why I was kind of delaying because I didn't really want to cut up my strut tower to, to get the, and I don't suspect you probably would, unless you're trying to slam it on the ground, you might get by with just some, you know, some of the old uh, camber adjustment bolts. But what's important to me is like that little gift, the packaging, I mean, they look great. Again, I, I get back to the Chinese issue. This stuff here, you know, heck, even a free sticker. But if you go to the link that you're going to go to to create something like this, it seems to me that if you can offer this for that price point, go ahead and make a decent quality piece and charge me $200 more. And that way, you know, at $500, you couldn't have put that much more effort into it that would make the extra $200 a losing proposition profit-wise because you made this for $300, all four of these and everything. 
So commit two hundred more dollars to it, and make it a really good piece. Your, the word will get out, so you'll make volume sales more than anything. And I'm not just talking about for a Saturday; I'm talking about for a Subaru or whatever car you'd put these on. But that's what I struggle with with the Chinese stuff. And so I, I, when I was on eBay and and Amazon, you'll see a set like this, and then you'll see another set. And what I've seen lately is there'll be like several different like vendors. It'd be like Uno and then papaya nan or and then jan jan and they have all these different names and some will be 200 some will be 400 they look the same it's almost like they use the same file photo my fear then would be that i would go with jane jane and pay 400 thinking i'm getting quality when in actuality it's the same dang thing i could have got from bobo and paid two hundred dollars less so that's what i struggle with right now with the chinese offerings that are on there from from amazon and ebay you can't i don't mind paying for quality there's a price point that i'm not willing to go beyond but at the same time i don't want to spend three hundred dollars and get something that by going to the second page of the the offerings there was the same thing for a hundred or 200 that that's what i struggle with and that's why i get so pissed at my friends uh with the red flag and yellow stars they they have an opportunity here to really uh because then what happens you know not trying to be racist or anything like that but the chinese name gets synonymous with cheap or no quality and i know they're a proud people i know they are a proud people i every chinese person i've ever met i love them they're so cool and I actually wanted to learn Chinese one time. And I know I know a little bit. And Nihama. So thank you and how are you doing? And uh, every time I say it, they bust out laughing because they're so happy that someone is speaking, trying to speak their language. But back back where we're at, I, I just, come on. So here it is, uh, the top here. You would use like an Allen key. Or whatnot to adjust it um, you can either if it's not too hard to turn they've got and it looks like you could turn it with your fingers yeah you can it has little detente in there you can turn it and this would set your uh, you want it hard or soft and this is what that thing clamps down to and you set that set screw on and then you're able to adjust it remotely with that extension but I'm not sure that in the back it's gonna in the back, it's going to matter a whole lot because remember, I'm swapping the spring over uh, from the, the current spring that's on here now, which this one, like I, I might have said in the past, this was an upgrade spring that I bought from Progress Group, and they kind of gave me like the next weight up to help support the weight of the turbo as I hit, as I, you know, jounce into a hole or whatever to keep it from rubbing that fender flare. So... If I use that same spring, which I intend to, because these should be about the same diameter and, and, and so forth, then um, it won't so much matter about this adjustment because I think that this one here, you know, I might have it set on the softest or maybe on the hardest first and then kind of drop it detente by detente and uh, just see if it, if it helps or not because I think the springs are going to ride so stiffly that the, the shock itself is not going to really contribute to any ride quality one way or the other. So, um, but right here is where the, I think I showed you that the, uh, that thing is going to clip onto, and then you can adjust it remotely with that extension. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, this is the whole, uh, the bottom one. This is the one you're going to adjust cut. Now, you see it's probably preferred that you do the bottom one as opposed to the top because look this is already what they call slotted so this is going to allow the the strut once you loosen that bolt down there to teeter into the center line of the car or away from the center line of the car it, it'll help give you some adjustment so you may not need may not even need a uh, camber adjustment kit so uh but anyway so yeah the, the top one we're going to elongate it coming up this way all right, and so I'm going to try to make it clean. Of course, always paint it so it doesn't rust out on you, especially you guys in the north. Um, so to help myself out, I'm going to take the strut off the back first before I tear anything down, and I'm going to set it next to this one. I'm going to measure it from bolt hole to the top hat, and I'm going to adjust the spring 
setting and everything to pretty much mimic the spring length that I have on there now. And then that way I don't have to do too much ride height adjustment. It's just basically a one for one swap at that point. So as is my want, you can see me already sweating out here now. Um, I'm going to try to get as much done as I can in the transition between the summer months and the fall months because I found that a lot of times, even in the winter time, it might as well be hot because I come out here and I just look and I, man, I do not want to be out here today because it's so cold. But I got to get this thing done. I want it by spring. I want to be able to hit one of the IFOs either in Ennis. I don't think it's coming back to Houston anymore. But uh, I'd like to see them use the San, the San Antonio track. It's right there on uh, I-10 headed west. That would be, I like that track. I've been there before multiple times when the uh, Battle of the Imports and stuff were coming through. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to work through it. I've got a lot to do. I'm going to show you little things here and there as we go through. But I'm not going to be in as, as, a, as in depth. I'm just going to show you what I did and tell you real quick why I did it. And uh, like for one thing, I'm going to put a, a uh, union on the exhaust right on the bottom from the header back to where, because it goes from the header. It's got a, a, a V-band. That's what I'm looking for. V-band clamp right there. Because this thing, when I took it off to do the header wrap, it was so tight. And, and I could not get that pipe to flush mount into the v-band clamp any better than i did and so i had a little boost leak on there that was in my son had and i said well who cares he's driving it he don't need to get full boost and mess up anyway and of course that didn't stop him so uh but yeah so like i said valve cover's going out it's going to come back wrinkle black like the honda tops i may put on that 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 sheet aluminum manifold i had on the race car I realize the longer runners will give you a little bit better low end torque. These runners on this thing are probably only about that long on the other one. It's got a big plenum. It'll bring all this down deep. So this will be more of like, almost, almost like this thing is uh, level at this point where it's down further back here. I just got to get my old bracket that I used on the other engine to uh, put them out to my alternator. But that'll mean a change here. That battery is getting relocated. I think I'm going to relocate it over here right now where the factory uh, EVAP canister is at. This thing don't do anything anyway. I'm telling you, there's no way it can. For something that small, and this is a 97, I still don't have EVAP codes. I don't think this thing works. Probably never did work. The only thing I've seen fail from time to time is the, is the EVAP purge, which is in the back there. This thing don't even have a, uh, a vent valve. Uh, like a regular car does and it's OBD2 so it's weird how they got away with that but but they did so it's a 97 I just got to pass safety now I don't so much care about that stuff plus with the the um, unit chip I can go in there and lie give it a false signal you know so if, if it's if it ends up being a problem AC uh, power steering is good AC uh, every time I connect this thing, even when I turn the car off, it's getting voltage. And uh, this thing will, like when I have it turned off per se, uh, it, it's still engaged getting power. And this thing pays off. These uh, dang compressors, the only one I've been able to find has it is O'Reilly's. And they're rebuilds, obviously. You're not finding any new stuff for this. I wonder if in the future, maybe there's some way to kind of make something close fit from a different vehicle to where you can have a little bit better options as far as reman and stuff like that it's worth checking out uh, i might have to fabricate up a bracket of course run a a uh, custom belt and stuff like that so yeah it's coming along